You guys getting prepared for this video. Got my notes here. So I, mean, I want to talk about how I set up this dirt tank. Um, now this is my only my second dirty tank, so this is by no means the best way to do it. But this is how I did it, and I wanted to talk about like how um, how everything worked out, and um, what I could have changed, and all that good stuff. So anyway, here we go. So I started off soaking the um, dirt about a month <coughs> about a month in advance. Uh, put it in flower pots and various other containers that had holes in the bottom. Idea was to um, uh, get the excess nutrients off more efficiently. That way, I could um, I could put the just put it under put the pots under slowly running water and um, have the water flow over it, and clear out all the excess nutrients um, instead of you know putting everything in the tank, then, you know, doing the whole fill drain, fill drain, fill drain. You don't have to wait that long, but, um, as long as I did, but, um, the main reason I did that was because I just kept putting this out, um, putting this whole thing off. Um, but, um, one good thing that happened is, um, waiting so long, um, <clears throat> allowed the soil bacteria to stick the soil particles together, so that way they settle out much faster and it, there's like there's a bunch of other biological processes that go on so um, I imagine that was probably good for the whole thing as well. Then uh, about a week in advance to setting up this tank I decided to I was going to put some peat in there as well um, so I soaked that started soaking that you know a week ahead of time. Um, I was worried that the peat would lower the pH a little too much um, so I decided to counteract that with um, dolomite lime, um, and I um, also used the dolomite lime to to add um, calcium and magnesium to the root zones. The dolomite lime dissolves really quickly, the, at least the stuff I bought, so um, I made sure to put that in the very bottom layer of I took a little handful of this um, espoma um, lime and mixed um, mixed it in with a little bit of dirt, real thin layer, stuck it on the bottom. I drained all the pre-soaked dirt and um, and the peat and um, mixed it all up with laterite. Now due to um, due to a really boneheaded uh, miscalculation or misestimation. I ended up putting um, way too much, way more laterite than I originally intended. So that's so my laterite looked kind of like that, or my substrate looked, my soil looked kind of like that. Then um, for uh, this step was probably wasn't necessary, but I also added a real thin layer of just plain old dirt on top of the laterite peat and dirt mix. Then at this point I added just enough gravel to uh, cover up the dirt, make it so like the plants wouldn't get all dirty. And as you can see, I ended up with a little bit of standing water. I had to soak it up with paper towels. Then I placed the plants where I wanted them. And I buried the roots on the crinum, um, Kleiner prints, and uh, the pygmy pygmy chain sword. And I built the gravel layer up to about one inch, and then I planted the stem plants. And uh, I, I am terrible at planting stem plants; they always uproot themselves. So if you have a better method of planting stem plants, stick with that. Then um, I started filling up the tank by pouring um, water into. Um, one of the containers I had to uh, um, to soak my dirt in. Uh, it's got a bunch of little holes on the bottom, and a smarter person probably would have poked holes in the side, but um, this method worked out just fine, and it didn't get any um, any soil kicked up at all. Tank was initially really cloudy. Um, 
still had some ammonia leaching out of the soil, so I had a bacterial boom. But that cleared up in a few days. Then uh, I added the fish week after plant about a week after planting it. And uh, despite having an um, established meeting, I still had um, I still got some ammonia, but it, it's not doesn't seem like it's enough to really bother the fish. They're behaving normally and all that stuff. Now um, on to um, how I would evaluate my methods. Um, and I'm, I'm beating this point to death, but um, soaking the, the soil ahead of time helps a ton, um, even if you don't do it for as long as I did. Um, I, I don't get a lot of um, um, bubbling up from the soil. And um, I think the bubbling that I do get is actually from the plants um, releasing the oxygen into the substrate. These um, these stupid things, these limnos, actually uproot themselves. I've had them uproot themselves because they were um, like purling out of the base of a plant, so they're just, just lifting them out of the right out of the gravel. So yeah, I haven't, haven't had had very much. Um, uh, air build up in the, in the dirt at all yet, um, but it uh, remains to be seen um, how it all works out in the future, but for now it's going well. Um, also, um, you may have noticed in um, my, uh, my other tank, I get a lot of dirt seeping through the substrate. Um, this may have to do with like the thickness of the um, of the layer, maybe I I did the, that layer a little too thin. Uh, maybe it's because um, the fluorite that I have is is a lot lighter than this gravel. Um, but um, yeah, so far I haven't had any any dirt leaking through this um, gravel at all yet. And then um, as I mentioned, the tank um, tank cleared up really quickly. Um, after I set the whole thing up, and um, also with the um, with the dolomite and peat mixture, uh, it didn't really have any effect on my uh, water parameters. I, I used um, uh, probably about this is a very rough estimate, uh, one to two parts peat for every ten parts dirt, and then you know, like I said, a little handful of the dolomite lime. Uh, pH is the same as it is out of the tap, same as the same thing with the KH and GH. So um, I'd be inclined to use a little bit more peat in the future. Uh, may maybe I'm, I mean this thing hasn't been set up that long. Maybe it, I've never, and I've never used peat before. Maybe it takes time for it to lower the pH. But, um, Yeah, as of, um, you know, a couple weeks into this, you know, week and a half into this thing, the pH remains the same as it is out of the tab. I was hoping to get, like, a slightly lower, I don't, I don't, I can't I remember if I mentioned this already, but, um, I was hoping to get a slightly lower pH than what it is out of the tab, but I get, like, um, it's like about 7.6, 7.8 out of the tap. Um, I wanted to drop it a little bit, maybe down to like 7 or so. Uh, just because, um, you know, I'm keeping South American fish in here. They like, uh, like a little lower pH, but I didn't want to drop it like so low like that um, I'd have to, you know, for new additions, I didn't want to have to, like, put them through like a huge pH swing to add them to the tank. Uh, that, you know, there's probably ways to work around that, but um, you know, more comfortable just sticking with a pH that's similar to what it is in the water in this area and all the local fish stores.
And then, um, this, uh, Brutella that I just pointed, I pointed that yesterday. Um, it was super easy to plant, way easier to plant. It's way easier to plant stuff in here than it is to, um, to plant in the, in the other tank. At least at the moment it is. So anyway, that's how everything's looking on um, uh, Tuesday, May 30th. Um, probably you probably won't be seeing this video till later in the week, maybe even next week, because I'm gonna have to edit the hell out of it. And I'm pretty sure there's something else I wanted to talk about, but I totally forgot what it was. And I'll probably I'll probably mention it in a later video. So if you watch this for this long. Thank you. Um, I appreciate you being able, being able to tolerate my boring ass video. And I hope you found some sort of useful information in it. So anyway, that's um, that concludes uh, probably 200 million hour long video. Peace.